I'm Brandon Carriel. I'm president and CEO of Windon Entertainment. Uh, we're a developer of uh, iPhone games mostly, and we also have done mobile and some Nintendo DS games as well. Uh, most of our business is um, third-party work for some of the bigger publishers like EA and Sega. Um, we do games like Monopoly and NBA Live. Um, and then most recently, we've decided to publish some of our own products. Uh, our first one was Space Miner, Space Robust, and that just came out about a month ago. Yeah, so Space Miner was, um, it was a lot like salvaging a broken play, if, if you want to use a football term. Uh, when we started the game, um, we decided we wanted to try to do our own game in the, in, the, in the App Store, as opposed to always developing for these other people. Um, so we decided we'd pick some really simple concept that we could do really quickly and get into the market and just see what happens. So we decided to do Asteroids, and uh, that was probably May of last year, or maybe even April. So we built this game, and we built this engine for it, and we started playing it, and we're all just like, this stinks. <laughs> you know, this is just Asteroids. This isn't really that much fun. What can we do to make it fun? Um, so, just before that, we had finished a game, Ninja Town, for the Nintendo DS, and we'd had a lot of great critical response for that game, uh, and we thought there were some elements there that we could bring to this kind of a game, and mostly it was just centered more around making it more of a, a progressive like RPG experience, so, you know, where the ship is sort of you, as opposed to maybe in a fantasy game, you're putting on your leather armor or something. In this game, you're, got, you're buying new guns for your ship, you're buying a better hull for your ship, you're getting a new shield, etc. Um, so we created this game, uh, gave it a whole, gave it a storyline, gave it uh, a lot of RPG elements, and spent way more money than we intended to. <laughs> uh, but our, our goal was to be different. Um, there's not a lot of games like this on the App Store. Any, any games that have a significant budget tend to be licensed or ports from other platforms. No one's really investing a lot of money doing original stuff uh, for the iPhone. Uh, so we're hoping that when we did this, people would say, wow, you know, there's this game experience that you know, is only on the iPhone, it's completely unique to it. Maybe they would enjoy it. Uh, and as it turns out, we've been right. <laughs> so uh, it's been doing pretty well for us. Uh, it did, it did uh, well in the US and Canada actually hit the top 25, which we were really psyched about. Um, and so far it continues to sell, so we're really happy. So it's kind of a weird game. I don't think there's much anything like it, even on non on more traditional handsets. Um, so our, our goal was to basically give the player things to work, give the player things to look forward to. Um, so there's several different mechanics we use for that. You know, and they're all sort of RPG in nature. First is just that there's a map that is initially locked. So to, to, to go farther out in the map, you need to, you, have a le you basically have a level that your miner has. And as he goes up in level, you can start going to further and further away from your base. So there's that element of exploration where you're trying, hey, I want to see these other sectors around me. I don't just want to be doing mining in these four sectors. And then as you get more money, you can buy new equipment for your ship. And as you buy new equipment for your ship, you destroy asteroids quicker and you can start finding more valuable asteroids. And then you start earning more money again. And now you're fighting these robot drones that sort of come in as part of the story. And now there's this whole extra story element that's sort of like, oh, what's going to happen next in the story? Uh, so you have all these elements, just you know, mechanics that, that kind of make you want to keep playing the game. You have a story that, keeps, that makes you want to kind of see what's going to happen next. Um, and it worked out really well for us because a lot of the user feedback we get is like, you know, this is the first game I've played for six hours straight on my iPhone. This is the first game that has killed my iPhone battery. And we just see this all over the place where people are just starting to play this game and then they don't put it down for like four or five hours. And there aren't really a lot of games on the iPhone that do that. Uh, our company was founded in 2002. Uh, we started off um, aiming at the, mobile, at the uh, console space. Uh, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> so uh, in 2003, we switched to mobile. Uh, and uh, we did a lot of the mobile games. Uh, that's basically how our business got built. Um, eventually, we hooked up with uh, EA, doing a lot of their stuff for uh, Brew and J2ME devices. Um, and now we've just been sort of evolving as, as the technology landscape has evolved. Uh, so now we're doing a lot of iPhone, which is pretty much the, the handheld device uh, of the day. So yes, uh, iPhone is great. It's it's great. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, really powerful. Um, it's standardized. It doesn't have any of the crazy uh, fragmentation issues you you find in the old landscape. Um, you know, amazing graphics and, and really amazing sound, which you know has been a huge huge. Uh, deficiency of most mobile devices in the past. Uh, you can do amazing stuff with it.